Hi, I'm Greg. Welcome to Affect Studio. Today we're going to listen to a selection of capacitors in the tone circuits of some of my guitars and see if there's any truth to the idea that different brands, uh, materials and construction types of capacitor uh, affect the tone of what should be exactly the same value capacitor and therefore should do the same job. Now there's a wide range of prices these capacitors are sold at. The difference in price is mainly down to construction methods and the quantities produced. So handmade and expensive may be better than mass produced and cheap, um, but there's no guarantee. These tests are not to be confused with changing the value of a capacitor, which will definitely affect the sound. A smaller capacitor is going to look through more you know, upper mids and top end, um, roll off at a higher frequency, and a larger one will roll off at a lower frequency, therefore obviously making a darker, you know, warmer sort of sounding tone. There are some big claims made by some people, and particularly manufacturers, as to the significance the construction type of the tone capacitor makes when it comes to shaping an instrument's sound. Now, before anybody thinks that I'm about to criticise the choice of high-end capacitors or um, component choice in general, um, I need to confess that I owned all but two of these capacitors prior to setting up these tests, and the two that I had to purchase were actually the cheapest ones, the green cap and the ceramic capacitor. Um, so, yeah, these were all mine. Now, some of them were in amps that I built, but I had, you know, decided to try these capacitors over cheaper options that I could have used. In the last few years, when buying parts for the Affect pedals or to build myself some amps, I've just occasionally snuck on one of these boutique capacitors to the order. My thought in buying these was if it added even a few percent improvement to the sound of the guitar, um, it was more than worth the money compared to the you know, cost of the guitar in the first place. Even the most expensive of these capacitors um, really wasn't very much. But of course, I haven't done the real testing, and um, if you're not making any improvement, then I'm just you know wasting money. So let's see if I have you know just bought into the hype and been sold snake oil, or if they really are worth the expense. Um, now there's a thought paper in snake oil capacitors. They should just be the actual pinnacle of guitar tone. Um, I'm going to play you the same capacitors in different guitars in the same order each time, but I'm not going to tell you what you're listening to till later. I'm going to give them numbers, same number each time, um, so that we're not biased, but what we expect should be better or worse. Oh no, that one can't possibly sound good. You know, it's got to be this. And, um, you know, the results may surprise us. There are 16 capacitors, so you might want to write down the ones you like each time so you can keep track. Uh, you might find that what you like in one guitar might not be the same with a different one either. Unfortunately, it wasn't possible to use my usual method of reamping the same clip each time for these and actually had to play the same part over and over and try to be as consistent as I possibly could. Um, now these are all 0.022 microfarad capacitors, which can also be you know, written as 22 nanofarads, uh, the same as 100 millimeters and 10 centimeters of the same length. Um, now these are mainly variations in polyester construction, along with one ceramic and four oil-based models. The first clip is my old Tokai Love Rock with Gibson Burst Bucker pickups into a profile on the Kemper of my Plexi style head and quad. Um, now, guitar without a tone circuit sounds slightly different to the way it sounds with the circuit all the way up, i.e. on 10. Uh, these all start with the circuit out, followed by the circuit in, but wide open. Uh, then the tone knob gets rolled down and it stays there, and only the capacitors get changed for each of the clips. <laughs> Thank you. 
These next two clips are my telly with Joe Barden pickups. You'll notice there's more difference in the sound between having no tone circuit and having it in but on full than you do with the Gibson style pickups simply because the um, 250k pots used in a Fender style circuit uh, filter more you know, top end to ground um, than the larger 500k ones used in the Gibson circuit. And then I played this into the 68 custom Princeton reverb profile I made in the Kemper.
right, this is a telly again, except I use my green 15 profile in the camper. <laughs> It occurred to me to measure the capacitance values of each of these, and I found some significant difference in a few cases, um, but they all varied. Um, now, surprisingly, the larger value ones didn't necessarily sound darker. In a couple of cases, some of the lowest readings uh, were the ones that gave sort of a richer, darker sort of tone. Um, so I don't really know what's going on there, except that obviously the materials do affect the tone more than just at the frequency that they cut off. For this last clip, I'll put up the numbers along with the model capacitor and the reading of that capacitor. They should all read 22 nanofarad. Uh, I've used Dora, my Explorer, into a clean 5E3 style you know, Tweed Deluxe with a Celestium Blue speaker.
So there they are, all 16 capacitors. I think I'm safe in saying that none of them sounded significantly better or worse than the others, uh, although some definitely changed the overall characteristic of the guitar slightly. Um, I've already put a different capacitor back into Dora, the Explorer, after listening to those, because the one I had in there, I decided wasn't the best choice for it. Um, so yeah, whether that's important is completely up to you. I don't think any of these make a significant difference, but there are differences there. I envy people who just don't care about this and um, just happy to get up and play, although I sometimes think they're missing out on, you know, some um, of the nuances and the joy of a really great tone. And for me, certainly, I find it easier to play when I'm happy with my tone. Um, it does affect me significantly sometimes. Um, but anyway, as always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Hopefully I've just saved you some money, not sent you down a rabbit warren of, um, you know, trying every option that's out there. And uh, hopefully I'll see you again soon.